turned off my penis! Radio Freeans with episode 339. Now switch it up from all the black metal with a little bit of death metal this time around. Talking about a supremely cult demo level band from the 90s that I'm pretty sure 90% of you haven't heard of. And the interesting thing about these guys is many years after they broke up, they sort of came back. in a pretty interesting kind of way. As a matter of fact, I planned on doing one of those two band episodes, combining this band with their neighbors to the north, Malamore, who also kind of came back from the dead in a really weird way. But I found out I just had way too much to say about this particular band, so they're getting their own episode. We're talking about New Jersey's own Gaft. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they weren't originally called Gaft. They were originally called Ritual Torment. Although actually, they were originally, originally called Blasphemy. Although for obvious reasons, since they couldn't put out anything under that name. But that does go to show how deep these guys' old school roots go, given that they were old enough to have called their band Blasphemy at one point. I mean, if a new band came out today, called themselves Blasphemy, you'd get hit with that. Like, um, I just, like, um, I would like, um, I would like, um... What are you, Stunad? You can't call yourself Blasphemy. There's a band from Canada called themselves that way back in the early 90s, and they're really famous. But the Gath guys are so old school that they were around during the years where you could call your band Blasphemy and then find out, oh, wait, there's already a Canadian band called that? Okay, we'll change your name. And it wasn't a big deal. And change their name they did. After not releasing anything under the name of Blasphemy that I could find, they changed the name to Ritual Torment. And during the years between 1991 and 1994, they put out three demos, of which I can only confirm the existence of two of them. I've only been able to find two of these darn things. And I've been looking all over the internet for a couple years now. Even their own old crusty MySpace only has Demo 1 and Demo 3 up. And they were definitely part of the New Jersey death metal scene. Alongside your Ripping Corpses, your Daemonices, your Latshaws, your Human Remains is, 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 your Mortal Decays. But they stood apart from those guys because a lot of those bands tended to move towards more of a spastic... <laughs> technical riffing style. Not that there's anything wrong with that! I mean, Moral Decay is one of the best bands ever, and Human Remains and Latshaw were fucking great until they, uh, weren't. But Gaft, the band in question today, was always way more unilaterally focused on being malevolent and dark and disgusting than they were on showing off their technical capabilities or cramming in as many riffs as they could. Despite that, they were still definitely part of the New Jersey scene, and in fact, back in their Ritual Torment days, they have guest appearances from the guys from Latshaw, Shaw, Mortal Decay, Ripping Corpse, and Daemonacy. And you can definitely hear a lot of Ripping Corpse on their very first demo, the self-titled one from 91. I mean, this slower riff right here with the more mid-paced double bass going on underneath definitely sounds like it could have came off a Daemonacy demo or a weirder Ripping Corpse song, and it gives them a chance to show off their talent for working in like more subtle layers to the music. They've got this sort of furtive palm muted melody existing behind the droning doom metal riff. And it all leads quite nicely to the first big change-up section of the demo. Yeah. From which emerges a very typical groove-based riff set from these guys, leading into another one of their compositional tricks, where they kind of Frankenstein together half a doomy riff with half of a brutal fast riff. They're big on doing that sort of thing, and it almost always works out well for them. And then they bring out their secret weapon, wherein these guys show off the fact that they are the unsung masters of groovy death metal riffs. Where you almost get a beat down hardcore sort of drum beat in the background. You have these very rhythmic vocals that are tying in exactly to the cadence of the guitars. And then these cool fucking solos. Again, a lot of ripping corpse going on here. With how primitive the groove riffs are, these guys will surprise you with how technical their solos get. And then into another one of their signature two part Frankenstein style riffs. This time it starts out tremolo picked and fast, and then it goes into a bit of more of a groovy thing before then going back into the tremolo riffs and they sort of alternate between these two little kind of mini riff chunks. That's a gaffed riff or in this case it's a ritual torment riff but come on it's gaffed and that's what these guys are generally about. They do weird spooky doomy layered shit. They do super heavy groove riffs and then they do this 
weird sort of chopping up faster riffs and slower riffs and splicing them together in a way that actually works and doesn't sound too cut and paste. And it definitely fits their lyrical content and influences. In a 2023 interview, they stated that since the beginning, they've stuck with the basics of human torture and hatred of the human race, further exemplified by lyrical contents including who to kill, how to kill them, and what to do with their remains, as well as lyrics pertaining to demonic possession, serial killers, and their art of killing, disease, rape, amputation, and basic graveyard fun. So you know, that good shit, the real death metal shit, none of that flat out fucking poo! shit talking about society or spirituality or their emotions or whatever. It's all death metal from that very first Ritual Torment demo up until the present day. And that of course includes the second Ritual Torment demo, or technically their third, but like I said, I can't find a copy of their second one, which was entitled, fittingly enough, Gaffed. I mean, you gotta start out with the fast blast beat part, get the blood flowing before they hit with that first groove riff, which when it does initially come in, sounds like it's gonna be doing a bit of a mortician style thing, sort of a gore polka groove type thing but then the drums and the vocals kick in and it actually ends up being this weird shambling monstrosity where you get these rolling double bass drums and the guitars almost sound like they're trying to strangle the percussion section and then the groove riff actually hits and it's fucking spectacular i mean if you're into baphomet or the humanized and you don't know gaff you're missing out i mean check out this part out fucking standing I mean, when they changed their name after this demo, they literally named it Gaffed after that part. Anyways, here's another cool transition section where the riff came in real fast and blasting. Now it's more groovy, more weird, ripping corpse sounding, especially with that overlaid lead guitar. Going into some heavy as fuck. Nasty fucking slow groove riffs. What's heavier than Pantera? Gaff. Gaffed is heavier than Pantera. As evidenced by... This fucking riff, that's some heavy shit. And their talent for writing riffs like that is why they ended up getting their own episode where I was initially gonna have them be part of a larger series. But the real reason these guys get their own episode is after they changed their name to Gaff, they put out this demo in 1994 called A Meal of Gore, and it's kind of the best thing ever. I've been listening to it pretty much non-stop for about two years now, and it hasn't gotten old yet. I'd put it up there with Lucifugium's Path of the Wolf, Cryptic Kerberos's 1991 demo, Cryptic Tales' Valley of the Dolls, Grand Belial's Keys Goat of a Thousand Young, Gorement's Human Relic, Crematory's Wrath of the Unknown, Vader's Morbid Reich, Enslaved Yggdrasil. That's a lot of names! It's not just one of the best death metal demos, not just one of the best extreme metal demos, but one of the best metal demos in general of all time. Like, if you haven't heard this, you need to hear it. It's so good. It definitely leans a lot harder into the sort of groovy Atlantic Northeastern style of death metal than their earlier, more ripping corpse inspired material did. But it's like they took that. <laughs> it was a bloody washcloth you had left over after you got done chopping up a body and just wrung it out over the sink so that all the hardcore punk, all the thrash metal, all of the fun mosh metal whatever stuff came out and all you were left with was just pure malevolence. It's so good. It starts out with this atmospheric tremolo riff, almost like something you might hear in the first Dark Throne album. But the first Dark Throne album didn't chug like that. It's another really good example of them taking two kind of mini riffs of different styles and stitching them together in this weird Frank and Stein way that actually ends up making sense. And it's a great example of the sort of songwriting tricks they use, of which here's another one. They take a more expansive sounding riff and start choking it off with palm mutes, playing the same notes but different ways in sequence for textured effect. Then they go back into that awesome riff from the beginning of the song as a transition riff this time, which leads into a very technical section of riffing. The technicality is not just limited to the lead guitar this time around, but because it's gaff, they use it as a vehicle to get us to the next section of primitive brutality, again, cobbling together a couple different styles of riffs, stitching them end to end into a decadent riff centipede. 
which leads into maybe my favorite part of this demo, where you got this tug of war dynamic going on between these really fucking sewer mutant level tremolo riffs, just the shuddering wall of sound, and these really thuggish groove parts, chromatic chug stuff way at the bottom of the guitar sound range that you're hearing right now, back into the tremolo riff. It's all about going back and forth between those two styles until you hit this kind of weird synthesis of incantation style atmospheric death with the artificial harmonics and a more thuggish New York style. Just a really unique blend of death metal subgenres that eventually unfolds into some downright disgusting sounding ripping corpse style wobbly decayed tremolo picking melodic shit. There's so many elements from all these other really cool fucking bands on display here but they're combined in this really unique way with gaffed style of riffing and it makes for some real evil shit. That latent ripping corpse thing going on enables them to take these chugging riffs and envelop them with this decayed sense of psychotic melody. Really good at building anticipation for whatever the next six sections gonna be. Like right here they're gradually adding more and more layers of fucked up melody to this combo tremolo and chug riff that they're so good at doing. Just so sickened and spooky sounding. Then it jumps into the transition riff, leading us to one of the weirder riffs on this particular demo, at least from a rhythmic standpoint. It's almost Human Remains level of wacky stop-start shit, but it retains enough of a death metal soul to keep from turning into the sort of weird proto-metalcore stuff that band would do. And it actually manages to work alongside the reintroduction of that churning sort of melody from earlier, now unfolding into a slightly different, but still depraved melodic direction. You know, for such a brutal sounding band, they do really seem to put a lot of consideration into how riffs get put together and how different sections of music lead into each other, which really helps them stick out in this early 90s New Jersey death metal context. And here we go again, leading out of the song with some more of that ripping corpse style tremolo overlay melodic stuff. This demo is pretty fucking cool because even though they don't re-record any of the old Ritual Torment songs, they do feature references to them. The title track of this EP features a very noticeable callback to the title track of Ritual Torment's Gaffed EP that gave this band their new name. This one's got more of a churning cadence to it as opposed to the blasting or slamming grooves of the other songs, which leads me to believe it may have been written earlier than the other tunes on this little tape, but Who knows? I'm probably just talking out of my ass with that. Oh, you want to know where the reference to the older material is? Well, check this shit out. They bring back the gaffed chant from that third Ritual Torment demo and into a full stop. Fucking brutal as shit, better than that guv guv part on that old demo. In fact, pretty much this whole demo, better than everything this band had done prior. Not only that, everything on this demo is better than most of early 90s death metal, okay? This shit goes real fucking hard. Cannot recommend this demo enough. And wouldn't you know, it's never really been reissued, you know? All you can do to hear this is just find some dude's hissy ass, grungy ass tape rip of it online. Dark Descent, Hell's Headbangers, Vic Records, somebody get on that. Cause this demo fucking slaps. One of the best ever. And the demo that came out a year afterwards, in 1995, ain't bad either. Entitled It Hurts To Be Dead after that one movie. The pain. What about the pain? The pain of being dead. <sighs> Trials. It hurts be dead. Because if you're a death metal band from New Jersey in the early 90s, you gotta sample Return of the Living Dead at least once. This one's kind of cool because they actually did re-release one song from it in 2022 as kind of like a remaster. So there is at least one demo era gaffed song floating around out there that has been cleaned up, had the hiss removed, remastered from the original master tapes, whatever the fuck. Anyways, it's called Chopping Spree and uh... Yeah, it's predictably brutal, as you would expect from this band. It actually has a much heavier emphasis on technicality than their prior material. Not that their other material was technically simple, but there's still plenty of groove. As you're hearing in this particularly potent set of riffs going on right now, it's still definitely recognizably gaffed, 
even if you can tell that they practice their instruments for an extra year. I'm not going to pretend that I like it as much as a meal or gore, but there's few demos that I enjoy as much as that particular demo, as you probably figured out. Anyways, the increasing technicality means that when they launch into those more ripping corpse style tremolo picked sections, they rip that much harder. And they're still real good at tying them into the more groovy sections. This is another really good example of said groove section, complete with that extra technicality I was talking about, like a dischromatic run. Transitioning into a whole new set of riffs, this one being quite thuggish in nature, albeit way less hardcore influenced than a lot of the thuggish death metal going on around at that time. And of course the solos are fucking great. Solos and gaff have always been a pretty strong point for the band. And it seemed like this band was going from strength to strength in the middle of the 90s. But nothing good ever lasts. And as people's attention turned towards black metal or alt rock or whatever the fuck, eventually gaff kind of dissolved after this demo. And here's where we get to the really weird way that this band came... <laughs> And it's some of the most New Jersey shit ever. Because one of the guitarists, Rich Calderon, happened to be in kind of like a bar band doing covers of mostly just pop rock songs from the early 2000s time period with Billy Latshaw, the guitarist from Latshaw, another early New Jersey death metal band. The name of this particular bar cover band was Dirty Water Dogs, which is a, a pretty good goofball bar band name, if I do say so myself. And yeah, most of the stuff they were covering wasn't anything I'd be interested in. But being a bar band will definitely help you keep your musical chops up doing all that shit night after night and eventually rich got back in contact with most of the other gaffed fellows from what i can tell that being the brothers mike luft and bob luft and bassist joe davidson incidentally that's kind of another wacky thing with new jersey death metal they got two old school bands that had family members you know brothers as members of the band gaffed and latshaw i wish my brother liked to do cool stuff all he listens to is fucking coheed and cambria and run the jewels <laughs> But yeah, all these old death metal dudes who probably for day jobs are like mechanics or accountants or whatever the fuck, they get back together. 2023, boom, out of nowhere, the long awaited by upwards of three people. Gaffed full length album comes out. Die already. It's got a pretty gnarly looking cover. There's this dude over on the left, kind of looks like Glenn Danzig fused with the guy from Hatred. He's got a gaff hook and a nail spiked bat. He's pursuing this guy on the right who appears to be a uh, half the bear. And he used to be, if you know what I'm fucking saying. <laughs> Whoa! He's got his guts all hanging out and shit. And then there's a really angry looking sign taped up to a tree. It just says, die already. Which I gotta think, that's what the guy with the baseball bat and the gaff took is telling this other guy. Like, bro, I cut you in half. Your guts are all over the place. You just die already? So yeah, aesthetically, pretty promising. Is the album itself any good? Let's find out. Well, wouldn't you know it, it sounds like a pretty logical follow-up to the It Hurts To Be Dead demo. You got your layered guitar parts, you got your chugs, you got your real grungy, nasty atmosphere and a heavy utilization of groove. The only thing that's really changed from that demo is they got this new drummer, Senin Solis, of the melodic death metal band Beyond the Flesh, and he definitely gives more of a modern drumming feel to the music, which is definitely amplified by the production, which sounds very, you know, Neil Kernan-esque for lack of a better word. It might turn off some people, but I don't think it's enough to ruin the album. And in fact, yeah, I fucking dig this album a lot. It's definitely recognizable as being written by the same guys that wrote the early 90s gaffed stuff. And it even includes some new tricks. For instance, it includes some much more standard New York death metal style breakdowns. Like this one coming up right here, but it still has this gaffed cleverness to it. Because they take a chunk out of this riff and dice it up. Like they cut off the last phrase of it and then utilize it as the breakdown with some real cool lead guitar over it. Now, obviously, that gravity blast wasn't terribly old-school death metal sounding, but the riffs themselves on this album, very much vintage gaffed shit, and hence, if you liked the gaffed demos, you're probably gonna like this album. So I definitely recommend picking that up. But more than anything, somebody out there needs to get to work on reissuing those two Ritual Torment demos and the two gaffed demos, because those are fucking outstanding. Supposedly, they're working on, like, re-recording that stuff, which I guess would be kind of cool, but I don't know. I want those original demos back, man. Those are so sick. Some of the best death metal ever. Hopefully you agree with me, but even if you didn't, thanks for listening or watching or whatever you did, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.